Welcome back to Titan Vans. I'm Matt. Today we're going to be showcasing a brand new custom rig fresh out of our Boulder uh, location right here in Colorado. This is a Sprinter 2020 170 Extended. So this is the big boy and is also the 4x4 model. This is a custom build. So here at Titan Vans we have two primary options. We have our classic option uh, which you can find on, find on our website. It is a hyper modular spec build which means it's built the same way every single time and this particular build is a custom build so this was designed for the client's needs we sat down with the client specced out what they're going to be using the van for how many people they wanted to carry their needs so whether they wanted a shower toilet kitchen all of that good stuff and this is what we came up with so we're really excited to show you let's jump right in So a couple really cool features on this build that are uh, unique to this. We went with a slatted roof ceiling opposed to our normal kind of upholstery on the roof. Came out really beautiful. This is alder on the ceiling, half inch solid alder. It's all tongue and grooved uh, together on the top to make sure that it lasts the lifetime of the van. Really strong joints, they're all glued together. Uh, this is a very long van. I think each one of these boards is uh, around like 16 and a half, 17 feet. So came out beautiful, it was a lot of work to get it in, but we're really happy with the finish on that. Uh, you can see kind of right off the bat, this was designed for a family of five. Uh, so we got three kids and the two primary seats, which we went ahead and already swiveled and set up the marine table here. So nice little eating area, the seat is removable. So if you ever did want to remove it, it's fully removable. This is a Mercedes factory bench seat. So the brackets in the floor uh, are fixed. Uh, three of them, they all bolt down through the frame rail, so extremely solid installation. And then the seat, like I said, from factory, from Mercedes, comes with three-point harnesses, some armrests. Uh, does not recline or turn into a bed, it's just a fixed bench. Uh, but it is um, OEM product and DOT approved, so um, for kids and traveling with uh, that many people, it's, it's crucial to have that. So, marine table is removable, so the top pops off here. And then the center leg is also removable. And then this entire assembly, you can see we have a clip on here on the bottom. And then the entire assembly actually stows right back here. You can see the mount for it on the wall, so the whole assembly stows right there. Go ahead and leave it set up for now. You can rotate it around, kind of get different functionality out of it, depending on whether you're sitting in the driver's seat, passenger seat, or just kind of need to get up and out of the way, kind of rotate it out of the way. We installed aftermarket swivels here on the driver and passenger seat. This did not come with factory uh, swivels from Mercedes, though we do recommend them if you're going to be buying a van to do a build with us. That's one of the options that we recommend getting direct from Mercedes. Not a big deal if you can't find them with them. We can always add them. It does raise the height by about an inch and a half for the seat height. For some people, shorter legs, that can be an issue. But uh, for the most part, uh, they're pretty good. Um, but the Mercedes factory ones are really nice. So, all right, uh, let's jump into the main cabin here. Kind of start going over some of the features. So you can see a lot of space. We kept this really open feel. We installed some overhead cabinets on the driver's side, but left the passenger side nice and open. So this is a big van. We wanted to maintain that feel throughout the van and not have it feel too claustrophobic by having cabinets coming out on both sides, kind of making this like a little alleyway. So by maintaining just the primary cabinets on the driver's side really helps to, to maintain that. So. You can see our, kind of our standard galley cab if you've seen some of our other videos. Um, though this one I think came out really nice. Ash countertop. We have our recessed induction cooktop. Um, again, uh, you'll see in a lot of our videos, we really like using induction. It uses magnets to heat up the pan so the cooking surface does not actually get hot. It's actually the pan itself that gets hot due to the uh, alternating magnetic field that's created by the cooktop. 
it actually uh, vibrates the molecules in the pan and those the vibration of the molecules creates friction and that's what creates heat so it's actually the pan itself getting hot and the cooktop does not so a couple of nice features about that is one it's very safe even if you try and turn this cooktop on it will not heat up unless there is something on it it also cools down very quickly because there's no heating element actually in the cooktop so as soon as you take that pan away very short time this is you know touchable you can put stuff back on top of it using you know put a cutting board and kind of use it as your countertop space again so gets that space back really quickly and makes this a little bit more of a versatile area versus just like this dedicated area to the cooktop it does require a larger battery bank to run induction cooktops this one's about 1500 watts though you're generally not running induction cooktops on high because they're so efficient uh, there's people out there with stories you know that actually have cracked cast iron pans because they heat up so fast uh, so generally not even using that full 1500 watts of power but still it's going to be pulling anywhere from 50 to 80 amps when it's running so definitely want to have a decent battery bank size in this van we have 400 amp hours of lithium ion with the capacity uh, we designed the cabinets to actually add an additional battery if needed so we can go up to a full 600 amp hours uh, at any point if the client decided to so kind of uh glossing over one of the key features here we we're really happy with how this came out this is a hammered copper backsplash and even kind of tinted all the rivets to make that nice little touch just so those blend in but this is all riveted and adhered right to the uh the wall panels here uh upholstered wall panels above so we wanted to protect that upholstery and give it a nice little artistic touch so this is designed right after the flat irons here in boulder colorado some people might recognize them but uh came out really nice nice little artistic touch a little different than kind of some of our other styling that we do but uh, again it was kind of a custom design for the client and i think it came out super nice so down below we have the fridge this is isotherm this is the drawer fridge stainless steel model a couple of things i really like about the drawer fridge it is deeper so it does require a larger galley cab but the drawer fridge is really nice um, if you don't like bending down to kind of like look back into the back of the the fridge so it's really nice you pull it out you can kind of see all of your uh, food all of your um, everything in here it does have a couple little drawers and a little shelf right here uh, for storing kind of cans and also a much larger freezer so on the door fridge which looks very similar you can get it in this clean touch stainless steel option it's about three and a half inches more um, kind of narrow in depth so depending on your design it it can be appropriate because it kind of eliminates some pinch points you know that three and a half doesn't sound like a lot but you know every inch counts in a van so with this design um, the freezer is really nice again on the door fridge it's a very small freezer so we really love these drawer fridges we utilize them where we can and in this design we were able to uh, make use of all that extra space and uh, fit this uh, bigger unit in here so a couple of uh, little storage here so we just have some little doors this is how you can access all your plumbing underneath and still have storage as well these are all rim latches you'll see these throughout um, our builds uh, but they lock in it's all stainless steel um, so it latches in and catches on the back right here so that's how that um, you know kind of keeps that from being able to open same with all of our drawers and doors we utilize these latches a lot all soft close hardware and down below here have a couple of drawers these are all dovetailed bamboo drawer boxes we have blum under uh tandem blue motion undermount drawer slides it's a mouthful but uh they work really nice uh ash countertop up on top here uh, so we do have our recessed cutting board you can see it's all grain matched which is kind of a nice little touch we try and do that and actually on all of our cabinets though it's not so noticeable on these particular cabs because the grain is kind of subtle but um all of our cabinets and countertops we try and grain match everything so this cutout here is actually the original kind of continuation of that wood there uh, little rubber bump stops on the bottom so you don't scratch anything up when you're sitting on the counter and drops right back in to get that countertop space back the sink here is 16 inches by 14 inches and 9 inches deep 
So it's a kind of a large bar sink, but it is a much larger sink than you'll find in a lot of van builds. All right, uh, we'll talk about some of the storage options. So we squeezed in a lot of storage and still, you know, again, kind of going back to that nice large feel that we maintained in here. Tried to keep everything really streamlined on the passenger side here, but we still were able to get in just a ton of storage. These are all adjustable. Uh, we do have a little lip on the front here to catch anything from sliding around. You can see all the pin holes in the side. So there's a couple of screws that go up into the pins here on the back allows you to adjust it, but you know, they're no rattle. They're not going anywhere while you're in motion, but if you need to get them out, storing different things in here, you can switch it up really quickly. Uh, kind of continue on just kind of showcasing some of this storage again, just lots of storage. This is a big van. And so we got lots, same thing on all this, all adjustable shelving uh, back here. This was kind of a nice little shelf we integrated in around our inverter. So this is a Xantrex XC 2000. It's a pure sine wave 2000 watt inverter. It is a inverter charger as well. So as soon as you plug into shore power, it takes over and not only charges your battery, but also goes into what's called bypass mode where it will take the power from that extension cord that you plugged in on the outside of the van and it will distribute the power directly up to our, our fuse block up top. And then that's where you can either turn on the cooktop, uh, the AC unit, uh, outlets, hot water heater, all that good stuff. And you're no longer using your battery or the inverter itself. You're actually just transferring that power directly from the extension cord into your van. So um, more storage. It's kind of a mirrored cabinet from uh, over there on the passenger side. And under here is actually our hot water heater. So this is a Isotemp Slim four gallon hot water heater. It's a marine hot water heater. And a couple nice features about it. Uh, it actually overheats the water. So this will heat up to about 185 degrees, which is way too hot for coming out of the faucet. But it has, it's a little hard to see, but tucked back here, there's actually a pre-mixing valve. So we can actually adjust the temperature that comes directly out of the unit before it even gets to the faucet. And then obviously you can adjust the temperature at the faucet as well. What's cool about that is that it actually allows you to stretch that four gallons of really hot water into six or eight gallons of normal hot water. So nice little unit fits really well with our builds. Again, that kind of like that square profile allows us to maintain a really slim uh, cabinetry design and really maximize the kind of bed platform storage space underneath the bed. Um, talk about a couple of the systems here in the van real quick. Water system, we have a 25 gallon fresh water tank, nine gallon gray water tank up underneath the van and it has a big knife valve for draining it. Um, this unit, we did install an AC unit on top and a fan in the back. The AC unit is a Coleman Mach 8. It's a, I think it's around, um, I wanna say like around 15, 1500 BTUs. I might be wrong on that number, but it's a, it's good for this size. You know, there's a big van. If you're parked in the, in the sun, um, it's difficult to keep this van. If you know, if it's a hundred degrees outside, it's going to be very difficult to keep this thing at like 70 degrees in here, uh, especially when you're running just off of the battery. It's a 400 amp hour battery. Um, the unit when it's running on high, the AC unit will pull about a hundred amps, hundred to 120 amps. So 400 amp hours, 120 amps from the unit. You can run this thing for about three and a half hours straight off of the batteries until your batteries are totally dead. So can help to take the edge off. If you're running the engine, you can run the AC unit indefinitely, essentially it becomes an auxiliary air conditioning unit for you, as well as you know the stock one that comes in the van. But if you wanna be completely off grid and you're sitting down in Phoenix, Arizona, it's 120 degrees and you expect to have that thing 70 degrees in here, it is doable, but you, we need to increase that battery size by two or three times, which can be done, but 
The batteries are the most expensive part of our build. Uh, those two batteries run around 2,800 a piece. So, you know, it adds up really quick. Um, they're very nice. They're Victron batteries. Uh, they're smart lithium ion batteries. So very nice units. Um, we've, we've had great success with them and, um, we actually have heating pads built into them. So some of you may be familiar with lithium ion and the downside to it is it's, usage in cold weather and they're a, a bit finicky and cold they don't like to get cold and you can't charge them when they get down to freezing and then if it gets down even a little bit lower than that it won't even discharge it'll actually shut itself off so we have a battery management system that's constantly monitoring temperature voltage current and if any of those are off in any way it automatically disconnects the battery so what's great about that is it protects the battery Again, most expensive part in the van, we wanna make sure we protect that investment so our system is resilient and robust enough to handle any sort of temperature, but it, it might shut off kind of depending. So as far as the cold goes, we have heating pads built right in onto the pads and we have a thermostat that's set up for those heating pads. And if the temperature gets down to 12 degrees Celsius, it automatically kicks the heating pads on and heats up the batteries. and What's nice about that is it actually heats twofold. Not only do we have the heating pad that directly heats the battery, but also the current to power those heating pads internally heats up the battery as well. So kind of attack the problem twofold, um, and, but it's not perfect. You know, you get down to like negative 20 degrees and you're not running the heater in this guy, then it certainly could get too cold and shut the batteries off. So as far as the heating goes in this unit, we have the, Wabasto Evo 40. It's a diesel heater. It's their mid-size unit. Puts out a lot of heat. They are really nice. The Evo 40 taps right into the gas tank. It does run off, has a small electrical draw off the auxiliary battery, but the main heating power comes directly from the diesel fuel tank. So no propane, no auxiliary kind of tank, you know, or power system. Everything is in-house Almost everything runs directly off the batteries, minus the Wabasto that does use some of the fuel. But all you gotta do is keep gas in your tank. So we've tried to make this system very simple uh, to use and user friendly. Um, but that unit, we really like the Evo 40s. They have built-in barometric sensors, which is a altitude sensor. So it'll automatically adjust your altitude change. So if you're heading up into the mountains uh, or going down to sea level automatically, um, senses those changes in altitude and will change the frequency of the fuel pump. So how much fuel is going into the unit to compensate for the change in oxygen present in the atmosphere. Um, for this size unit, Evo 40 is critical. Could have even bumped it up to the Evo 55, but um, Evo 40 will definitely keep this thing nice and cozy. You throw some window shades in to help with a little bit of insulation. Um, you'll be nice and cozy in, in most any temperature. So, um, talked about the water, talked about electrical, we got the heat. Um, let's talk about the sleeping. In this van, again, family of five, uh, so no shower or anything. We do have a, a toilet, which we'll touch on in a little bit, um, but we focus mostly on the bed system. So, down below, we have 48 and a half inches by 72 inch long bed platform. It is a two, I guess technically three platforms, though these two are actually welded together with this hinge in the middle. They are fully removable, so the rails stay on the wall here. Um, and we just have these pins here in the side to release all of the individual platforms. You can release this little pin right here, so they just clip right in. And what's nice about this is we actually turn this guy into, oh, that guy came on clip there, into like a little couch setup. So you can set this thing up, use these straps here to uh, adjust to your comfort level. And just kind of a nice little place to like hang out if people are cooking. Um, just wanted to make something that was a little bit more versatile than just like a fixed bed platform that was in the back. So does the couch, can fold up, stows a little bit nicer in the garage when you're not using it. Um, you can always throw pads right down on the ground. This bed platform, so rather than having like a, you know, a fixed foam mattress down here, uh, they opted for just like throwing down like Thermarest or Paco pads, something that's inflatable that can stow easy in one of the cabinets here. 
uh, versus having to have this big cushion that you have to kind of lug around. And if you're not using the bed platform, then you got to put it somewhere. So um, all in all, it's like pretty comfortable, even with no padding on here. We got a little bit of upholstery and, you know, you can adjust this guy to some different levels here for um, your comfort. Um, or just leave it flat and keep it as a bed platform. Uh, you maintain the storage underneath here, even while having this kind of second tier. So, you know, duffel bags, ski stuff, boots, shoes, they can all get tucked underneath here. So you don't lose all that storage just by having a second platform in. And uh, so nice option, but like I said, can always be removed. Uh, but if you got kids, obviously you're gonna need a place for them to sleep. And so, um, you know, in vans, it's always tricky to find these additional spaces here. Clip that guy back in. Um, cool. So that's the lower bed platform here. Um, the upper bed platform, this is our bi-slide design. So we uh, utilize this design. This is from our classic builds. Uh, so you'll see this standard in all of our classics, but we utilized it here. So what's cool about this is if you do have this lower bed platform out, you can see how much room we have back here. This bed is compressed right now. So this is in its stowed position. It's a two piece mattress. This is five inches of foam. These have three different types of foam in it. So we have a firm layer, a mid density in the middle, and then a pillow topper. So what's cool is you can flip this guy over and either change it to kind of a more firm mattress or to a softer mattress, depending on your comfort level. So um, you can do this and they're both built the same way. So you can kind of flip flop them as needed. Underneath here, we have a couple of latches. So we simply release these guys here, loosen them up, slide these guys back. Tighten that down just to kind of keep them stowed. And then I recommend just kind of grabbing right here by the handles, lifting slightly, and then just sliding this guy straight back. Grab your mattress and pull it in. And there you go. That easy to convert back and forth uh, to the different um, kind of the stowed to full bed position. This guy is 70, all the way to the back doors, we have 70, I believe it's 76 inches all the way to the back doors and 70, 74 inches wide. We do have a little bit more space here between the uh, window bump out there and the, and the side. So uh, it's a custom mattress. It doesn't kind of fit nicely into one of the kind of standard queen king sizes, but um, a little bit bigger than a queen size, like a typical queen size, uh, but smaller than a king. But very big, so I'm six foot two, six foot three. Um, this guy, lots of space. So I'm not even just touching the back doors here. And it's, you know, it's a full size mattress, really comfortable. Again, you can have that reversibility so you can kind of tune it to your comfort level. Um, you can see with this lofted bed platform, we set the height uh, so that they can do bikes underneath. Um, so what that means though, is that, you know, it is a, a bit higher platform. So I can still sit up, but you know, it does start to get a little bit tight up here as far as like full headroom, but that's kind of the compromise. If you're trying to squeeze bikes underneath, um, bed's gotta go up. Now, you know, we could lower this whole assembly down in a custom rig. Uh, if you're not concerned with doing bikes underneath or kayaks, any of that stuff. But uh, once you wanna use it for like kind of gear storage and you know, especially the bikes, they just are tall, even with dropper posts, the handles usually come out around like 37 inches or so. So that's kind of like our minimum clearance height under here is 37. Uh, and then with the five inch foam mattress, obviously we're up around uh, 42 inches to the top of our platform here. So windows in the back here though, um, do make it feel really spacious. So even though there's not, you know, um, you know, there's quite a bit of room up here and it feels very comfortable even for me being a taller guy. Uh, we can crack these guys open, get some nice airflow. These are awning style windows. So they do shed water when it's raining versus like the slider styles that have to be closed as soon as it starts raining. So we really like these awning windows. We utilize them in pretty much all of our windows now. Uh, when you turn the fan on, it can suck the air in right through those windows. So you get really nice airflow. Uh, this is the Max Air 7500K, so it has a built-in rain shroud, um, speed control, reversibility, thermostat, does have a manual knob here so you can lift and lower um, if power is interrupted for any reason. 
Um, lights in the back, so we have our flexible reading lights here. They have a couple of different modes, so uh, low, high, and off. And then they do have integrated USB ports as well. So uh, charging ports right for your phone off of either side here. And we do have additional charging ports up here uh, in the back corner. And we have controls for the light. So single push um, on these uh, momentary switches to turn the lights on and off. And then press and hold and we can dim the lights down to the desired level. Once we release, it holds and we can turn it off and when we turn it back on it goes to the last known uh, level that you chose so bring them back up here max there um last thing here in the back we have our speakers so we did do rear door speakers on this guy 2019 plus vans are a little bit more difficult to add speakers because we're no longer just a stereo unit up front Mercedes is now offering kind of their MBUX system, which is a full integrated computer system that communicates with the CAM system of the vehicle. Makes it a lot harder to just like add additional speakers. So what we had to do in this guy is actually add an amplifier underneath the driver's seat. It's a four channel amplifier. And then we ran all of the speakers, including the front ones directly off that amplifier. We then had to put in like a fader knob so you can control the level back here because the MBUX system does not recognize the rear speakers. Uh, so it is time consuming, it's challenging to get these in. Um, we can definitely do it, uh, but it's nice to have them back here, especially if you're just kind of hanging out, you want tunes, especially in this long of a van. I mean, you know, you might start to get a fade towards the front, you know, or kind of like a uh, delay, you start like hearing the sound and it takes so long to get back here, this thing's so long, but uh, so having them back here is really nice, uh, but with the, the new vans, it is a little bit more challenging as far as just electrically, like how what we have to do to make that work. So cool. Um, I think that's kind of it for back here. Um, we'll touch on uh, the toilet real quick. Uh, I kind of glossed over that really fast, so pivot around here. So the toilet's right down here. Um, it is uh, clipped down to the floor, so it's not going anywhere. We built this nice little cover for it. I'll slide this off so you can get a view of it. Get in here. Oops, I think it's kind of caught in the back. Just pivot this up. Um, so this is the Dometic Sandy Potty um, 960. Uh, simple little cassette toilet, so it can be fully removed. Just slide out this clip right here, and you can remove this whole guy. Um, just a simple little toilet. Um, you do have to slide it out to use it, but it's kind of here for like emergency uses, for the kids especially. You're on a road trip, you don't want to stop, uh, especially in these times, right? COVID times, we're seeing a big influx in people wanting to use vans, not wanting to stop at convenience stores and gas stations to use bathrooms. So having a option is really nice, though this client opted out of having like a full fixed bathroom setup. Um, just went ahead and did a kind of a more of an emergency toilet. It wasn't gonna be their primary use. So it's a option, it's here when you need it, works great, um, can be dumped out and you know, kind of um, porta potties or rest stations, anything like that you can use, uh, or an RV dump station uh, can be dumped as well. So, you got options, it's here. Uh, but again, in this design, this was not kind of a primary feature that they um, wanted. So, we got, got it in here. But, this guy covered. All right, uh, let's roll around to the back of the van real quick. We'll show you a couple uh, features back there. And uh, a couple of things I didn't mention on the outside of the van here. We have a Illumines double loop roof rack on top. Uh, so that's a custom aluminum powder coated roof rack. It has the perforated aluminum bottom. Uh, so it's a full deck on top, so you can walk around up there. Three to four people up there is no problem. There's a lot of space up there. We have uh, 200 watts of solar on top. So we opted for a smaller solar array on the top. 
to maximize that square footage to make it more useful. It's kind of like a hangout storage space up there. So um, back here on the back of the van, we have our exterior outlet. So powered right off the inverter and our shore power plug. Takes a standard 120 volt extension cord, no special adapters or anything needed. Try and keep this really simple so you're not having to carry a whole bunch of extra stuff. And uh, we do recommend like a heavy duty extension cord, but other than that, it's uh, a bit simpler than some of the other systems out there. All right, so in the garage, um, obviously it is a pretty open layout. So you guys were able to see most of this from the front as well. Um, you can see down here, we have the L track in the floor. So logistical track that we can attach different quick disconnects for pull down straps, stud mounts for bikes, all sorts of different stuff. And we have a couple of products that we're producing in house that integrate right into the L track for carrying some different equipment. Uh, we got some load lights underneath the bed here. So some nice lighting uh, for when you're loading gear in and out and just a simple little push button switch right here on the back to turn it off and on. You can see there's two more latches back here so you can fully remove this bed platform, weighs around 60 pounds. Uh, I do recommend two people, it's got the handles right here that you can lift it out with, but simply loosen these guys as well and the whole thing pops right out. So very easy to get it out of your way as, long, as well with the lower one. So if you need to use this thing as a van, throw a fridge in here, uh, got errands to run, motorcycles, whatever, we want to make sure that things versatile enough so that it can adapt to whatever your your trip and your life or whatever that uh, that need may may be. So over here we have a our kind of our water control system. So the 25 gallon water tank is tucked right underneath here. We do have a little sight slot up here, and there is a tank backlight. So this little switch will illuminate through the tank, helps to make that uh, water level a little bit easier to see. Here we have our water fill. So it has a little built-in strainer, has a check valve built into it too. So you can fill the water tank, but then water cannot come back out. So say you're going up a steep hill, all the water comes towards the back of the tank. We don't want that water just spilling right out of here. So that built-in check valve keeps that from happening. Uh, we have our spray down shower. So you do have to turn the water pump on. And then the spray down shower, uh, you have your control valve right here. So we have both hot and cold water in this rig. Hot water heater takes around 45 minutes to fully heat up. And uh, then you have that, you know, kind of six to eight gallons of hot water coming out of there. And then the spray down shower has a little tube, little press button here for the spray nozzle and you can lock it on as well. Uh, all stainless steel, metal, uh, no cheap plastic kind of RV components in here. Uh, we stick with all marine, aerospace or military spec products for most of our uh, components, so. Slide that back in and then down below right here we have our control valve for the water system so the this valve has three different settings um, so there I'm actually draining the tank and you can hear the water kind of coming out the bottom there is off and then that is on so now we're allowing water to come out of the tank through the valve up to our water pump and then we have our full water pump assembly with all of our control valves right in an easy accessible location. Over on this side is our electrical system. So down below we have our um, lithium ion batteries, has a cover here that you can pull off to access those batteries. And up top here we have our electrical utility panel. So this is our solar charge controller up top. Our DC fuse block by Blue C. We have our control, our main battery shutoff switch here. And this actually controls not only the battery primary shutoff, but also the solar. So we integrated that into one switch to keep it simple and clean. And then we have our large fuses here. That's for our alternator charging. So we have directly connected to the alternator of the vehicle. It charges as soon as you start the engine and will automatically disconnect the two battery systems when you shut it down. So there's no way for you to either, you know, if you're using these back batteries, say you're cooking, you're not gonna discharge your front battery. So it keeps those two systems totally isolated and vice versa, if you accidentally leave your lights on, leave the stereo on, which all still runs off the front battery, the cranking battery, it will not drain 
your auxiliary batteries, which is the ones that we install here in the, the rear um, cabin. Another nice feature with that electrical system is we actually install a switch up in the dash. It's kind of an emergency control switch. And what that allows you to do is if you double click it, it temporarily connects your two batteries for 15 seconds to allow you to jumpstart yourself. So a nice little kind of emergency backup system that hopefully you never have to use, but if you do, it's there and it's two clicks away to get you, get you up and running. Uh, so that's our electrical system. Um, that's pretty much everything on here. All in all, we're super happy with this design. Came out really beautiful, still maintain kind of a, you know, somewhat of a modern industrial look, but the warmth of the, the solid alder on the ceiling really shines through, I think, in this design. And kind of the more modern contemporary finishes on the cabinet and the flooring, I think really pair nicely. I think the client did a great job kind of specking all this stuff out. And all in all, we're super psyched on this rig. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned some stuff. Lots more to come. We got more builds coming out, more products. So stay tuned for more. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already uh, so you can stay tuned for all the new stuff we got coming out. And uh, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. That guy. <laughs> Just... <laughs> All right, we're still running, so that's good.